Do you know what it is? Maybe you've seen vehicles like these. They are autonomously driving minibuses, but so far everything was really restricted and just in confined areas and they were going slow. But does autonomous driving really work? Today we're going to take a look at it and I say it will be completely different. They are going reasonably fast and fully autonomous and this here is an area with normal traffic. Let's see how that works. So this area here belongs to a hospital, but it's actually a vast area and there's also normal traffic in this area here. But it's a very good probing ground indeed and a really realistic probing ground. So I just need an app on my smartphone and then I can actually order the vehicle from here. I, you know, the car or the app already knows where I am. I just have to see and define where I want to go. And maybe also if I have, you know, we check with me how many people in you know overall or maybe is there like you know any additional service or something and then the vehicle is already coming in a matter of minutes hey, and there it already is of course these vehicles look kind of funny they're developed by navia this is the company and also there's technical support by siemens and let's see i'm just going away that it still continues driving they look indeed kind of bulky, but of course it's all about form for those function in this case. They are not meant to replace taxis by the way, and so not also meant to replace all these jobs. More like replacing big buses which are often driving empty. Of course this thing is electric, has an electric commuting time of about 8 hours and this is supposed to bring more mobility into the inner cities because more and more inner cities, especially in Europe, they are actually getting restricted for normal public traffic and then this would be a clean solution. So it's really not about that this is going to replace anything. The only thing that might happen is that, for example, some bus drivers get supervisors then for these autonomous vehicles. So far, there need to be safety drivers on the inside for just governmental law reasons and this will be obsolete maybe at a later stage but already a very interesting approach. So let's get inside. So we also have seat belts here because at the moment it's driving maximum of 25 kilometers an hour but they aim for this 50 kilometers an hour mark. This is theoretically possible and then it's also let's say reasonably quick in the city but I mean the speed here we're driving at this moment, you know this maximum 25 kilometers an hour is already way faster than any other prototype we've experienced so far. So this doesn't feel so prototype alike like we did in the past when they were going really really slow and you see here it just works basically and to me it's also already right now one of the most impressive demonstrations of the autonomous driving vehicles. You can see it here just normal traffic and the car is managing very well. Do we, do we actually call it car? <laughs> and with that here's a stop sign and let's see if the yeah the vehicle is going to stop. Coming, drive by. No, it's like possible. Mm. Well, one problem can be when vehicles are parked in the wrong way or somewhere, and sometimes these vehicles will need to break the laws, maybe like crossed lines or something, which we do intentionally sometimes by ourselves. Yeah, but this is also one of the remaining problems. And of course, what happens when I interfere with the vehicle? Does it really break? already right here so or does it okay it does <laughs> so that worked and then let's see when I move away nice was it just a mistake or what happens with the second one let's see if I walk closer it stops earlier so let's see how I walk away there we go so this seems to be working very, very well here. Nice. And now we're here in the depot. That's where they come back for recharging. At the moment, there are still cables in the background, but the plan is to have inductive charging platforms that also this is working completely autonomously. The whole project is called Avenue, or Avenue, when we uh, call it in, in, in French. And it's actually a project funded by the European Union with a lot of money, actually, because the mobility for inner cities is a crucial problem for the future. Responsible here on location is the TPG, the TPG, that's the Transport Authority of Geneva, and also the, the University of Geneva is a big collaboration partner for this project. And now I'm with Jurim Burkers, he's the project leader for the TPG, for the 
Geneva Transport Authority. So usually you use external sensors for these prototype phase and so on. Is it also the case here or do the vehicles completely drive autonomously? Not at all. Our vehicles are capable of managing every situation on the road. It means that when there is a traffic light, a roundabout, a stop sign or whatsoever, they fulfill exactly legal requirements and they manage everything by themselves. How expensive will this going to be? Is it more like, you know, comparable to a normal bus and will it replace normal buses and so on and maybe even bus drivers? Well, this is an interesting uh, question as well. Um, of course, um, currently what we have is, is larger buses uh, let's say buses of 44 places with one bus driver, um, which are not very suitable for uh, on-demand driving. So what we would like is to have like four minibuses, so cut the, the, the larger bus in four minibuses and to drive, let them drive on an on-demand basis. The only problem that we have then is that we cannot cut our safety driver in four and so we have to equip the other buses with an extra three safety drivers. And so at the moment there will be more jobs first because the, before there will be less jobs? Yeah, well what, what we don't want to do is, and that, that's not the future of in 10 years, but the future in one or two years is to have this uh, operator, this, this the bus driver in, this, in a special office to supervise these four minibuses driving around. So we don't skip uh, any, any places and so on but it will be automated. Um, and we, uh, the, the, the important thing is for us, not everything uh, which concerns technology, but service levels. We only think in service levels. We are a, a public transport company. Our mission, our goal is to be able to transport everyone everywhere inside the canton of Geneva. And for this, we try to design and develop solutions. Now it drives out of the depot again. And by the way, the safety drivers that are still on the inside, I mean, even if it drives autonomously, maybe these drivers will be needed, for example, to assist elderly people or maybe also then um, people with disabilities and so on. So there will still be a requirement for humans inside, either in the vehicles or maybe as assistants, or then in the observation center and so on. And this is a supervision center, so we can see here on the big screen, the red dots are the possible stops where it can go actually in this whole area. And these are the cars here at the moment, one in the depot, the other one is coming right here. So there are actually a lot of possibilities and that might shake up mobility as a whole. Of course, not maybe long term and high speed and so on, but everything that is basically in the inner city place, this will actually come first. I would like to know from you guys what you think about autonomous driving in general and of course this use case here for public transport autonomous driving. The own passenger car autonomous driving is of course something you know similar in a way but also completely different on the other hand and this is also an issue we are keeping you updated here on our channel.